Hello and welcome to another show. Thank you for joining me. Before we jump in, make sure you're subscribed. Hit that like button for me, please. Drop me a comment if you feel like after watching it. And of course, make sure you share it. Now, I first started on this topic after watching a documentary called Missing 411. I thought it was very informative, very insightful, and most of all, it was very disturbing. Right? As you can see, I have two stats on here. This is the number of missing children each year. And that is from the FBI NCIC. The NCIC is the National Crime Information Center. Right? Now, that's an estimate because if you look at the daily, right here, it's 2,300, which would put the total at something at over 800,000. Right? If you go by the daily total, multiplied by 364 conservatively, 837,200. That's a lot of children going missing. Now, that's just the children, the children. If you look at missing persons, this is the total. For last year, from the same place, NCIC. Right? Now, again, estimates could be higher. Now, you say, so what are you getting at? Well, where are all these people going? How are they disappearing? How is nobody finding them? You know, we're in the 21st century. It's 2022. There's like cameras everywhere. Everybody has a cell phone with a pretty decent camera in it. So how are all these people going missing without a trace? How is that even possible? It's not like we all live in rural areas, you know, five, ten miles apart from each other. Some people go missing in the city where we live one on top of the other. How is that possible? Let me show you. I think this might be a part of it. This shows, and I'll read it, with the shortage of legally sourced organs around the world, it is estimated that the illegal trade of human organs generates about $1.5 billion each year from roughly 12,000 illegal transplants. So imagine, only 12,000 out of this number or this number, or if you jack it up, 2,300 times 364, they're only using 12,000. And that generates 1.5 billion. Imagine what a considerable addition to this number would generate. Imagine. I know it's pretty gruesome stuff, but just think about it. Think about the possibilities, because we don't know where these children are going. We don't know if Bigfoot got them, the Loch Ness Monster, Skinwalker, Sasquatch. We have no clue. Because they're gone with no trace. Think about how the families must be suffering. And you say, well, how does that happen in the first place? Well, this is what we come to hear. What I have on the screen is a large amount of drugs that has been seized coming into the country. The borders are a complete shit show. Honestly, complete shit show. It's, it's bad. But I want you to hear the double speak, right? Because we know the Biden administration is allowing many illegals to come through. And let's not be confused when we say illegals coming from the southern border. These people are not all Mexican. They're not even all Southern American. These people are coming from all around the world, coming to South America because they know how bad that border is. Let's roll the clip. I'll let you hear it for yourself. The order declaring a national emergency over drug trafficking. Yesterday, the president announced the Emergency Economic Powers Act will remain in place for another year, claiming drug trafficking into the U.S. is still a major threat to tens of thousands of Americans dying annually due to overdoses. Many critics claim most trafficking is happening at our southern border, calling out the administration for failing to enforce policies at the source to stop it. Fentanyl seized at our southern border is up by 400 135 percent this year alone. Let's bring in Robert Charles, former Assistant Secretary of State for George W. Bush and former Naval Intel Officer. Robert, remember when Barack Obama... Now, before I even let him talk, they said critics say they suspect the majority of it is coming in from the southern border. Now, I don't know how much you could really get across per person. Let's say you have a guy carrying a backpack that's coming across he might be able to carry 
what, 10 pounds? Let's say you have four or five guys, none of them get caught. So 10 times five, roughly 50 pounds, right? That's still a lot of dope, whether it's fentanyl, ecstasy, cocaine, heroin, whatever coming in. That's still, you know, a pretty hefty sum. But here's the problem. If the border issue is just at the south, then all these children disappearing all over the country, where are they being trafficked through? Can't just be the south. This is where he comes in. Obama's DHS Secretary Jay Johnson admitted in 2019 that numbers like these are cause for concern. Quote, I know that 1,000 apprehensions overwhelms the system, and I cannot begin to imagine what 4,000 a day looks like, so we are truly in a crisis. If 1,000 per day is a crisis, Robert, what is 8,000 per day, which is what we saw just this weekend? Yeah, so Todd and Carly, I think it's, uh, it's, it's it, you know, you begin to lose uh, the right people. words to say crisis in uh, uh, bolder print. I mean, we had 2.9 million expulsions under Title 42 between March of 2020 and April of 2022. And I think what happens is if you send a signal to the world, and in particular to this hemisphere, that you don't respect your own sovereignty, uh, then people will pour in. There are caravans now of buses headed our way. And don't think for a minute that this is just a Texas problem. I was just in Texas, but it's not just a Texas problem. Every state today is a border state. And then look at the other side of this and look at the drug problem. It's contradictory to say on the one hand that uh, you, you, you think we have a drug crisis and on the other you're going to keep the border open. Uh, you know, and, and it's ironic, really. I mean, George Herbert Walker, boy. He just said it right there. If you're complaining that you have this much dope, literally containers full coming in that you've seized, so you can only imagine what got in. If this is what they seized, imagine what got in. You have an epidemic. I think this guy goes on to say 108,000 overdoses last year, resulting in death. You have a problem that big, but you do nothing about the borders. They're not even talking about this issue. This is just the drug part of it. Hear me well, they're not even talking about, well, the border is an issue because so many kids are going missing. They're just talking about the drugs coming in. But somehow, it comes in, you see some of it, where, where are the, the, the kids that are being imported and exported to our country? Where, what's going on? 460,000 and there's no trace. And nobody finds this weird that there might be something sinister happening. You see, but if you don't speak about it, you know, nothing happens. It doesn't affect you. Then you turn a blind eye. It's like, well, you know. But just imagine if this was you, someone close to you, you know, disappeared. You have no idea what's going on. A child out there. Right now, it's, it's what what is today? Today is the 12th, 13th, something like that. Woke up this morning, it was 28 degrees. Cold. Pretty cold. Imagine a child goes missing in the middle of winter. Have no idea where they are. You're dead worried. Where can this child be? One hour, two hours, three hours, four hours. Turns into 12, 24, 36, 48. But this is what's going on. The borders are a mess all over the country. And this guy is just printing money and sending it to the Ukraine. The stock market is down. Bitcoin is way down. I mean, Bitcoin's highest peak was what, 68,000? Right now it's hanging at about 17.5 or so lost over 75% of its value. That's how bad the economy is. Inflation is like, what, 7.1%? The average is supposed to be like 32 
So it's up roughly 4%. So whatever the value of your money was, it's lost that much of it. It takes more to buy less or more to buy the same amount, whichever way you want to look at it. But in certain cases, more to buy less. This is where we are. And forget about the jobs. The job situation is terrible. Personally, I've applied for dozens of jobs online just to see for myself. Because you have all these people on YouTube saying, oh, they have these leads for remote jobs and this and that. I'm like, okay, let me dig into it and see if any th this is accurate. Because I know I'm pretty much qualified or overqualified for a $15 an hour job. And I was making 25 at my own one. So let's see. Not one callback. And these are bullshit jobs. Starter jobs. Not one callback. What is it? Is my resume too good? That's why people don't call me back? I mean, too much experience? You have tech companies firing by the thousands. And you still have the border open. And you're still printing money to send to Ukraine. After that FTX scandal, you would think somebody in the Biden administration would be like, yo, it's bad times right now. We need to, yeah, we need to pull back. No, they're just, yeah, we need more money to send to Ukraine. What, what, what about what's going on here? What, what about money to, to, to handle this? What about the Americans who are struggling? All the unemployed Americans that are struggling. This is why when Victor Boot said that he has a sense of empathy for America, that used to be that shiny town on the hill, that example for other countries to follow. I see where he was going with that sentiment. I definitely do. But anyways, what say you? I think I've linked these two pretty concisely. I don't have definitive proof, but it is weird that this many children can go missing. The borders are jacked, and then you have people making money. Organ trafficking. And of course, sex trafficking too. That's That would be a definite. But nobody sees all these people disappearing. Nobody knows where they go. It's like, poof. Gone. Anyways, that's my time. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you share it. Of course, subscribe, like the content, and I'll see you next time. I'm out.